guys, Nick from Hi-Fi Collective here. Um, today we're going to be building, it's kind of a newish product, um, Elma do a 20, 47 position switch, which is this one. This is a standard one put through hole board. Um, Lucas, who was their kind of chief designer a few, a few years ago, he's left Elma now, basically came up with, with this design. We worked closely with him to effectively make a shunt attenuator board. It's, it's jumbo, so you can get, you can actually go to one watt resistors. We do list this product at the moment, but the great thing about this is, it's really quite straightforward to build. If you can imagine, we do do a step attenuator with this one, but we, we sell it as a built product because it's so tricky to, to build. You have to get it all quite, you have to get it spot on. Um, the holes are very close together. So even though it's compact, it's quite a tricky build. But the, with the jumbo, um, you know, you can do it at, at home. We can just provide all the parts. Um, this particular one I'm building now is um, using the Audiono 0.5 watt non-magnetic tantalum resistors. Um, so let's get cracking. With the board, you can see, because obviously it's 40, 47 steps, so each step is numbered. You've got R in here. Now this is the load resistor. Remember, it is a shunt, so the signal is across the load resistor here. So that goes there. And then R2 obviously relates to the second step, so which is going to be this one. So it runs down like this across here. Um, also, it's very, very important that you do check the resistor values. I mean, we will provide them all kind of test, you know, we, we pull them out and draw, individually bag them. But if you get a resistor in the wrong place, they're a nightmare to get out because the, yeah. the solder holes are put through. So you've got the pads on both sides, but also within the hole, it's like a cylinder of um, solderable material. So trying to desolder one side and the other side and get the thing out at the same time and then clean it up because it's a bit of a nightmare. Um, I mean, they're, they're great boards, pretty thick and quite durable, but you don't want to be in a position where you've got to take a board, take a resistor out. So, I'm going to pop it in the vise. I mean, obviously, I've not got the switch connected. Uh, the switch part will come later. This is basically how it works. You've got, it will sit like this. The tracks are where the switch mechanism works. You can see the gold contact there, it just sweeps around the board. Um, so we're going to be loading up, loading up this side, so the resistors are sticking up here. Um, this particular one is using half watt, which is fine. The space here, you can actually put the resistor in there as well. There's enough space to fit it. With the a, with a one watts, you have to, have to have it coming out the other side, so it makes it for a longer switch. So we'll pop it in this. This is the side that you're going to physically put the resistors in there. So the RN is there. These are the load resistors here. Now I like to use, just to make it regular. So you just bend the lead round, the screwdriver, something like that, like that. So I also like to use the tolerance band as the one that goes into the board just to keep it regular. They're not directional, these resistors, um, but just to keep it the same, that's, that's how I do it. So the actual body of the resistor goes in. You can see the ident has a circle around it. So that just pops in there, push it all the way in. So that's how it works. And then the next one is R2. So the R2 is the first of shunt resistors. That's a series load resistor. So this is the first one here. Same again, you can see the color bands. That's the tolerance band of the last one, the brown. So like that, wrap it round, out, pop it in, like that. Next one, R3. When you're putting these in, make sure you, because they do change direction, so you've got R2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, but then 10 is there. So don't make the mistake of thinking it starts there again. 
look at the, the board of the market. R7 is the next one. Cool, so I'm gonna do a little test with the meter. Just, just pull it out so I can access the ground. Put it to resistance, touch the ground. There. All right, and then you're just going around the board. Now obviously these, these aren't soldered in, so you might need to touch them just to get contact. Um, so first one there, 47. 99, that's fine. Cool, happy with that. So all I was looking for, because I've actually tested these anyway with a meter, just sitting there touching, checking the resistors. But the value is increasing as you go round, and it seemed fine to me. So I'm now going to solder up. Sometimes you turn these things over and they'll the resistors fall out, and then that's, that's a pain. Right, but when I'm soldering, I am still going to push the resistors in. This tape's stopping them from falling out, but it's not making them flush. Using the old fateful 3.8% silver gold solder from Mundle. Love this stuff. So we've done half the board here. They're all soldered in for full soldering. We did a test, just ran around the contacts there in the middle. So we're now gonna do the other half of the board. So what I'll do now is I'll fill the other board and then exactly the same way and then we will Put the switch together again. Okay, so we have now got our populated jumbo boards full of our wonderful Audino non-magnetic tantalum resistors. So we have to now put them on the switch. So we sell, there's three different types of um, board arrangements you can have with the A47 switch. You've got the put through hole ones like here where you stuff resistors around them. You've got the other one, which is a, the Series SMD, which is a board similar size to this, but it's got resistors soldered on, so you have to put that one in, and then you've got this one. So what we do nowadays is basically we, we buy the switch mech, and then basically all the bits to put it together. This is the way I do it. So you've got, they're numbered here, one, two, three, four, five, goes around the top. So that is at the top, like this and you've turned it fully as if it's volume down, so it's fully anti-clockwise. You pop that there, and then just put it together. So this is the center spigot. Slide it in there, like that, and then basically just gently push it in, it will snap in place. Then you've got plastic covers, push down, then you've got these. So this is where the mech is held. So I know that it goes that way. You can see one's blind there. So that hole hasn't got, you can't see through that hole. So that's where the, the spring goes on the contact. It goes there like that. So then you've got a thick black washer there around that on there like that. The spring which sits in that closed hole there, like that. Then you've got the contact nipple thing. So that drops into the spring, like so. And then you've got the gold contact U, just like that. And that slips in. Oh, it's a bit easier to do with these. Like that. Cool, that's done. So you can get ready for the board. But the board has 
these washers that sit inside the board. Whoops, I'll um, I'll have to put them in here. So like that. That's cool. So also on the board, there's a washer. I've already put this one on. Just popped it in there. So I know that position one is going to be there. So basically, it goes that way around. Okay. So you slip it over very carefully like that. So it's these, but then the washer goes over them, over the top like that. When you're putting this together, or even, well, when you're taking it apart, you must be so careful because these things will drop on the floor and then just disappear. And the solder's a pack, so it's a nightmare. People lose bits. All right. super thin washers over the top like that clip so I go under there lift it up and then like that cool so that's done so if you're doing a mono version of these you're effectively doing the same but you're using obviously the shorter internal shaft so it will be there and then you'll you'll just use one of those so yeah turn the volume down again pop it in now you've got to put the other side on so first one is this so and then the covered hole goes that side put the washer spring So the torque of these switches is set by how springy the spring is. So I've got about I've got 1.5 newton per centimetre. There's, I'm pretty sure there's an eight. Yep, and there's a 15. So the 15 is obviously a harder turn. Same as the other side. Get one of those ready. And the other one. You can see that there's plenty of clearance from one layer to the other. See that? Can't see anything touching. There's air between the two. Cool. Then I've just got to put the um, rest of it together. Two thin black washers over the top. Over the top. with what the values are so I don't, really, I don't need to reference a sheet of values of these resistors. All I want to see is that the numbers are the same and it's just going up in resistance. I mean, I've done, built so many of these you kind of get to know what the values should be. Lowest setting, they went on ground. Zero there, right? Looking good. Two K. Right. 
funny cake. This is a 250k version. Though on this one I've used 220k and then zero it's um, infinite on the last one. I've used 220k on the actual load resistor here. Which you can see if you connect into out, you'll see 250k, 220k. I'll just about that, then my fingers are in the way. Cool. So that's that's that done. So to, to, to do a mono, you just obviously are only using half, one board and one wafer. Cool. Oh yeah, by the way, if you do make a mistake, not that I have ever made a mistake making one of these, because <laughs> this solder goes through the hole as well as both tabs, you can remove the resistor quite easily, but if to clean off all the solder is a nightmare. So what you need to do is use a drill. I've got a micro box drill here and you use the drill, which is smaller than the hole on here. So 0.9, something like that. And you very carefully drill out the hole. You have to be especially carefully because careful because you don't want to you want that connection to go all the way through. So when you resolder, make sure a load of solder goes down the hole, which it will do because these are a lot smaller than the hole intended. But I did not make a mistake. There you go. Is that clear that, we, that we yeah. didn't, I didn't make a mistake? I don't think anyone's going to realise that you made a mistake. I think they are.